Welcome back traders to Star Oasis channel. I am Ali Casey. In this video, I will show you the data subscription in Strategy Quantex and how do you use it and what are the symbols available. So let's dive in. In this video, I will show you the data package in Strategy Quantex. So in order to do anything inside Strategy Quantex, you need data. For testing, you need data and you need quality data. Usually, uh, in the videos before, I showed you how to import uh, data and uh, if you didn't see, I have a video on that, how to import data from other platforms or from uh, free uh, sources. And also here you have some free sources. So inside Yahoo, you have uh, the stocks daily that you can add. And I, for example, I added here Apple and its daily time frame. And it's really easy to just download the data every day and then you will get a, uh, a daily time frame for Apple that you can do your testing on. But uh, the problem arises uh, when you need the futures, of course, or if you need intraday data to do intraday strategies. Now, you still can export it from other platforms and import it here, but it's uh, very time consuming and prone to errors uh, if you keep doing it and once you let's say you reach I don't know 20 50 symbols then it's really not a an efficient way to do that so what you need is a data subscription method to bring uh, data inside SQX now data is not cheap and uh, I can show you that there are many vendors for data bar chart e-signal uh, CSI DTN and many more, some you heard of and some you didn't, but they are usually expensive and rightly so. And uh, Strategy Quantex, they don't have their own data. I think they did some kind of deal with the data vendor because I noticed that they make sure that you cannot export it uh, outside SQX. So that means they made some kind of deal to bring you in uh, this data cheaply. And it is cheap. And if you can uh, see here, on yearly, you can get the one year subscription for equities intraday and end of day for $200. Also, one year for futures intraday and end of day is $200. And the really good one is the for both, which is equities and futures intraday and end of day is only $270 for, you, for one year. And this is really a good deal. And you can check, of course, around and see. This is no brainer if you bought SQX because you cannot get the data without buying it. If you bought the ultimate, then you already got this. And if you just bought the license, then you can easily buy this for 270. And if you got my, uh, my uh, coupon code for SQX and got the $200 discount, then you only need to use $70 more and then you're in for one year worth of data. So that's a no brainer in uh, my book. To use this data, you can see here, they have full list of tickers. So I downloaded those tickers and you can see that we have, so for futures data, we have 10,903 ticker symbols. And for stocks, we have 11,346. Of course, it's impossible to go through these uh, in an efficient way and find out when you need. And that's why I'm here to help you. So I made a short list for futures and for stocks. For futures data, we actually have 252 assets or future contracts. And then many expiring month uh, derivatives of that. And I'll show you an example. So as I told you before that the ad represent a continuous symbol and I described that in a futures video I did recently. If you didn't see it, go watch it now and come back here. And if you watched it, then you know the ad symbols represent the continuous symbol. That means all future contracts are joined together to give you the most recent and the history. So you can do your testing on it. And we have one for intraday and one for daily, and each one has a different starting date for the data. Now, if you go down, scroll this list, and I'll make this uh, sheet available to download. If you scroll down, then you'll find that there are other symbols that don't have 
the ad symbol. And these have only expiring month. And let's take the butter, for example. So the butter here, there is no ad symbol. That, that doesn't mean it's not available. It is available, but let's go here and let's search for And you can see we have already three, 13 contracts for butter. Now, these expire. These are not continuous contracts. See, this one expired March 2009, 10, 11, May 2009, 10, and July 2009. And, 10. and you can see the data available. So for this one, the daily time frame available, the daily data, it's only from March 20th, 2008. So it's about a year. And for the intraday, it's available from January 30. So it's about about three months, uh, less than three months for intraday. So of course, if you want to do testing, you need a lot of data to generate a lot of trades, to have a statistically significant result that you can use. So these are not usable. Uh, I would say for retail is not usable to uh, to do your own testing so you need the continuous type and of course uh, as i said there are 10,000, so it's impossible to go through them so i made it easier for you if you just go here and if you click on the continuous and just click on the s part then you actually have 56 contracts that have continuous data on and then you can drill down, for example, I only want, let's say, the uh, CME contracts because let's say, let's say you're trading uh, on uh, TradeStation and you have no subscription for the other data, so you're not going to do tests on them. So you're just going to import the CME. And for CME, you have only 20 continuous contracts. Also, you can filter by type. So there is currency, commodity, current index, interest rate, and metals. And inside commodity, you have uh, subcategories. And you, know, you can filter by name. So like we did before, let's say we want uh, milk. And there are no matches. And that's weird because we should. Oh, because it's no. Yeah. So if you click on this. Because I know milk doesn't have a continuous contract here. Yeah. So you can see that we have two symbols for milk, but none of them is a continuous contract. And a lot of them are available here. And then they will be in the, they will be expiring months. So you can see we have 273 of them, but none of them is is a fully continuous contract. So same goes for stocks. And you can see here we have NASDAQ and Amex and other OTC. OTC is over the counter usually. These are very thin, thinly traded stocks. And I would stay away from these and I would just focus on Amex and NASDAQ. So uh, if you focus on Amex and NASDAQ, then you have roughly 5,449. And I have this short list again, same here. And you can also filter by type. So this is ETF. I can only do ETF. We have 2033. So this is a nice way of filtering. Okay, now once you filter the data, so let's go back here and let's clear this. Let's pick the continuous contracts. And let's say I want to trade uh, like we said, the CME. So these are the contract on the CME exchange. To find out the data here available, you go to SQX future data and you go find data. So the way you want to do it is you have to type the symbols here. And since I have it already filtered, then you just need to go here, go to the ticker, click on the one you want. And let's say we want up to here copy and then come back here and paste so once you paste it it's already here and if you click only continuous futures look up 
then it will bring only the continuous futures. Now that doesn't filter it because that will still bring uh, some uh, data that's not required. And you can easily filter them and you can see here that this one and dot D. And then I will neglect the one that has more letters after the first two. So for example, we go down, yeah, again, this one. Then we go down again, this one. So you can see, you can easily find them. And that's all of them. Then just click uh, the data time zone is the exchange and the timestamp is for trade station futures data because I use trade station and multi charts and I use the exchange time. I confirm I agree, then add and it will add them. Now, once they are added, then you can easily just click this Uh, go to update and it will just download the data automatically remember this is uh, intraday time frame and you can see how fast it is because it's cached on their CDNs that's also part of the subscription and it's already done so one more thing is important here. Once you downloaded this, it's already put in, in instruments. So if you're doing your own, you have usually to add. So for example, I did the VIX. I have to come here, add the VIX, the tick size, the point value. And then I have to go to data and then click this and then import the file inside this. But here, because it's all done automatically, then all the instruments are added automatically with their own ticks. And you can see all of them here. Look, each one have its own point value, the tick value and the step. So that's also a very uh, good uh, feature to add. The only thing you need to come back here and add, which is the slippage and commission. So I can come back here and say the default slippage is one and the commission per trade is two and a half dollars and then you can do the same for all the contracts now one more thing if you're not a futures trader i want to bring your attention to and again if you didn't see my futures video please go back and see it there is something on the continuous contract when you do the continuous contract basically they join all the future contracts and that creates either upward or downward movements in the history and here i want to illustrate this i'm going to show you so this is crude oil um, continuous contract september 2020 expiry and this is november 19. so i'll show you the same date and they will have a different so what is it sorry um tools view analyze data so you can see here this is january 2nd 2001 the close is 139.65 and if we go to the november 19th expiry november sorry 2019 same date january 2nd 2001 it's 125.87 and that's a problem with all data vendors it's not the data vendor problem it's the how you join the contracts so there are ways to basically do it differently basically we'll have this problem in all continuous futures data regardless of who is the data vendor so something to keep in mind is when you build strategies on continuous futures data you have to stay away from fixed uh, price increments. So for example, let's say you're building a breakout strategy and the breakout calculation, the level is, let's say the close, yesterday close 
plus 20 cents. You have to stay away from this kind of strategy. Because when you go back in history, the price is usually compressed. So 20 cents of today will be 2 cents 20 years ago. Or sometimes it will be negative. So instead, you need to build strategies with percentage. So for example, you should say the breakout level is yesterday close plus 2% of yesterday close. Or yesterday close plus 5% uh, of 10 days ATR. And that way, even when the price compressed, the level will be correct. And so that's just uh, something you need to keep in mind. Now, uh, same thing if you want to import uh, stocks data. So you can filter here. Of course, if you add volume, then you can and you can filter on volume and type of sector. You can add the sector here and volume. But because I don't trade stocks, I didn't do it. But you can easily add another column here and just uh, do volume and sector and then you can filter and then just come here and copy the symbols and go back to data sources and SQX equity data and then you can look up and actually you can scratch name you have the ticker and then you can download uh, this but I don't use uh, stocks data but it's the same symbol so but once you have this basically every day you can come just click on this and just click update and it should update automatically. So that's a lot easier way to bring in data and do your testing on it. So one more point uh, I want to bring to your attention is this. They are updating the database frequently. So even the contracts that uh, doesn't have continuous uh, symbol yet, uh, they will be uh, updating those with a symbol. So we have like 250 futures contract and uh, more like about uh, 200 of them doesn't have the continuous part, but so uh, it is coming. And also they will add the Australian and Toronto Stock Exchange and the uh, index uh, composition, including history. So that's coming in future updates. So I hope the video is useful and I'll see you in the next one. You reached the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Please comment, subscribe, like, so Google can show it to other traders. See you in the next one. For futures, we have 10,903. And for stocks, we have also 10,903. Uh, that's a huge coincidence. Is that so?